Welcome to Channel 18 News, I'm Jim Rogers. Lisa Smith was named City Finance Director during Tuesday night's Silver Spring City Council meeting. The council also approved two industrial manufacturing items, set the city council election, approved the concession stand contract for local parks and other items. Ms. Smith began working for the city when she was 16 years old and remained in city employment while attaining her bachelor's and master's degrees. According to city manager Mark Maxwell, she's been trained for the city finance position during the past five years, working closely with former city finance director Peter Karsten. Karsten recently retired. She was presented as director to her staff Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. Her employment as financial director was a unanimous decision by the council. Another unanimous decision by the council was the approval of a new economic development corporation project that will result in a 150,000 square feet building at Heritage Business Park. Three local banks, Alliance, City National, and Guaranteed Bank and Trust, will provide a loan for $7.8 million for the building. The city will not be responsible for the debt, which will be paid from the lease of the facility by Load Trail, a builder of dump trucks. New jobs at the facility will total 150. City Council members John Sellers and Emily Glass recuse themselves during the discussion and vote due to their employment at local banks. However, City Council member Don, Dan Fronneberger asked EDC Executive Roger Figley a number of questions regarding the agreement. Fronneberger also included a guarantee bank and trust loan officer in attendance in the questioning. The loan officer gave hearty approval to the integrity of load trailer and the loan. Fronneberger also questioned a 380 agreement with Backstory Beverages Company, LLC. The company is taking a pro property valued between $48,000 and $50,000 and investing $950,000 in improvements. Backstory plans to hire eight to 10 employees. Fronneberger voted no, but the remainder of the council approved the manufacturing facility. Council approved Whitaker Homes for construction of homes based on a Texas Development of Housing and Community Affairs Home Program. Two homes are currently approved and one is awaiting funding. Income and conditions of the home, income of the individual and conditions of the home must meet specific criteria set forth in the program and ownership of the home is granted when the resident has lived in the home for five years. The municipal airport will install a next generation traffic control system and transfer two lease agreements at the airport. Council approved a state reimbursement and expenditures for moving a sewer lift station and sewer lines along State Highway 11 West near Stonebriar. The move is necessitated by changes to the roadway by TxDOT. All other items on the agenda were approved, including a Homeland Security grant for the police department. In public forum, a local resident requested attention be given to the Senior Citizens Center. City Manager Mark Maxwell highlighted street improvements, wastewater and sewer work, and Crosstown Trail in his report to City Council Tuesday evening during their February session. A portion of Gossett Lane has been repaved as planned. Junelle Street has been milled and is awaiting asphalt paving. Milling is ongoing on Beth, Razor, and Rose Streets. Calvert Street will be milled and repaved during spring break. The city will at this time forego the planned reconstruction in the Woodside or on Woodside Street in the Woodbridge addition. They are foregoing that in favor of re reconstructing a portion of Woodbridge Drive, which crosses between the two ponds in the addition. The street is beginning to fail. It's thought the culvert between the ponds is failing, which in turn is causing the street failure. 41 street repairs have been made following utility repairs. Capital improvement crews are beginning their work on the aging sewer lines that run through the middle of the hospital complex. The proposed route will go around the complex and work continues at the wastewater treatment plant. Here's Don Julian with sports, several signed letters of intent to play college ball today. The number 14 ranked Wildcats basketball team reclaimed first place with a 67 to 58 win over Mount Pleasant in a packed Wildcats gym Tuesday night. Wildcats basketball coach Clark Cipolletta said a pregame speech helped set the tone for the win. 
I was super happy with the guys. They, they, uh, they really took pride in the things that, that, that we started doing at the beginning of the season. And uh, I really think uh, Gigi's speech before the game really gave us uh, – really gave us the edge. She talked about at the beginning of the year, we didn't care who scored. We didn't care how many points each other scored. All we cared about was getting stops and, and preventing the other team to score. And uh, he said, and we had to do that when we played against good 6A competition. But here of late, with that, that, that pride that we took in getting stops uh, hasn't been there. And he said, man, I, guys, I challenge you tonight to, to really step up and, and get stops. He goes, I don't even want to score tonight. He said, I just want to keep them to single-digit quarters, and I'm going to get rebounds. He said, I'm gonna, I, I don't have to score one point tonight. He said, but I'm going to help us win. And I think the team really carried on with that um, that theory and, and, and ran with it because we played great defense tonight. Mount Pleasant's a very good team. Uh, they can go in streaks and runs, and uh, they're just so athletic. And uh, it's just super proud of our guys for just playing with that pride and uh, playing good team basketball. It must have been fresh on their minds because you gave Mount Pleasant six points in the first quarter. That's all they got. Mm -hmm. You had an eight-point lead. You end up winning by nine, and so you just you got into the lead and just never gave it up, even though they made a run at you every once in a while, but just hung on to the lead. It was. I was telling Don uh, earlier that he said, you know, basketball is a game of runs, and I think it's the ultimate teacher of life. Like life, you're gonna have ups and downs, and it's all about how do you respond. Can you cut that that bad streak off really quick, or you let it linger around because maybe your approach or reaction isn't very good. And uh, tonight's a great example of us um, snipping uh, that run when they had it, when they made it. We, we we made some big shots. We got some key stops. Maybe made a big rebound or two when they went on those runs, and uh, that was definitely another difference maker. Uh, really, they had no answer for Victor. He had seven first quarter points in that first uh, quarter we were talking about, and 21 for the game. Willis had 15, and so they just, uh, you know, kind of that inside-outside game really helped us. We did. Uh, that was a big emphasis on, on, of ours, that they weren't very big. They have a lot of physical bigs and very athletic guys uh, in their uh, in their posts, but uh, we, we really made an emphasis to get the ball down to Victor and and our other post guys early on, and even I thought Sedadrian, even Sedadrian Hall came in and yeah. had some huge buckets down low for us, and Xavier got some rebounds, and Gigi. I mean, um, it was a complete team, team effort. Everybody came in, they did their part, they stepped up when they had to, and, and our bench. What a, what a, I know this isn't ever in the stat line, or it, it doesn't get glory, but uh, the guys that didn't play tonight, like, my hat's off to them, because they were engaged in the game, and, and all they cared about was getting a win. I mean, they were, they were chanting on, uh, their teammates, they had such enthusiasm, uh, and, they, and they did it with, with such a, t a TOE mindset. And, uh, you know, hats off to those guys as well because they really made a difference. Uh, one game lead now with the two big district games left. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, Greenville uh, coming up mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, Hallsville on senior night. So, you know, it's there for the mm -hmm. taking for the Wildcats, and who knows when the last time they won a district championship. I can ever remember. Right. So it goes back, you know, I go here 12 years and it's sometime back beyond that in the d distant past. Yes, and I told the guys, man, you got a chance to make history. Um, and, and, and history remembers you forever. Uh, it never goes away. And uh, when, when you work really hard and, and find ways to come together as a team, you get to experience stuff that stays around forever. And uh, I said, guys, you just have the opportunity to do that, make the most of it. But, but this game didn't, doesn't make us or break us. We're going to the playoffs. We're still going to make a run. It's just a small step in our journey. And district championship's nice, but uh, we don't want to stop there. We're not, we're not rooting and, and chanting about that. We're, we're, we're trying to go further than that. What's it like to coach during a game like this with so much emotion and an enormous crowd here? Probably the biggest we've ever seen here in Wildcats. For sure, I would I would really like to thank the, the Sulphur Springs community for coming out. Uh, it, it's it's such a humbling, and I'm gonna get teary eyed, not because I'm crying, but um, it's, it's just such a humbling experience because I can remember, you know. Like four years ago, we came here and I had a dream and uh, as a head coach to, to really try to turn this basketball program around. And, 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 and that has to do a lot with support of the community. And uh, our, our kids work so hard and the community's really supported us. And uh, like tonight, it's just such an experience for those guys. And I can remember maybe one time I ever played in an atmosphere like this. Uh, so I, this is something those guys are going to remember forever. They'll, they'll talk about this at their 50th year reunion. Remember when we packed out the gym, the fire marshals were here. They were. They were going to shut it down at 1500 and uh, we were able to find a win together. Um, and I just, I think that's a special moment in those guys' life and in mine. When I think about that young middle school coach that got his chance to coach and started out with the JV and then worked his way to the varsity 
and always said he coached every game yeah. like it was the seventh one of the NBA. And now that kind of coaching has really helped in the Wildcats. For sure, and, and I'm the type of coach that, you know, I'm, and I try to get it to the guys that every day is a perfect opportunity. It's a new opportunity, and you just got to make the most of that opportunity. And if you're not going to do something with enthusiasm, then why do it at all? If you're not passionate about it, then don't do it because your heart's not going to be in it, and you're not going to succeed as, as you should. So, uh, you know, that's something. If, if these kids can learn anything from me, I don't, I don't care about a basketball shot, a form shooting, anything that we do, but uh, to treat each day with a lot of enthusiasm and passion, they'll be okay. Three in transition off the iron. Fight for the rebound, it's loose, picked up by Gigi, turns and puts it in. The Wildcats will be playing at Greenville on Friday night. The number 14 ranked Lady Cats basketball team remained in a first place tie with a clutch victory at Mount Pleasant 59 to 41 on Tuesday night. The Lady Cats opened up the game with a big fourth quarter. The Lady Cats will now play Texas High in Paris Friday at 7 p.m. to determine the district champ and the top seeding in the playoffs. I talked with Lady Cats coach Jeff Chapman about that Mount Pleasant win. They played much better than they did here. Mm -hmm. And it's the time of year when, um, you know, they should have improved because they went through a, you know, um, a whole season. Uh, our traps and stuff, uh, you know, didn't work as well. So we played um, a couple of different defenses and um, they went up a few times and their kids played pretty good. Um, second half is when we kind of um, got it going. Fourth quarter. Uh, fourth quarter was a real good quarter, but we stayed ahead most of the game, but then the fourth quarter with free throws and um, uh, fast breaks, um, we kind of blew it open a little bit more than it was a three and five point game most of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they knew that, they knew already where they were seated for playoffs, but they, one of the goals that they're seeing is they were seeing like one of their goals was to beat us. Mm -hmm. And they were very, you know, you could tell they were disappointed. After the game, you know, I wished them luck and we talked as coaches, Tina and I, and to see if we had film to share. But as far as the game, um, they were playing a pressing man to man, so we tried to get to the basket and we tried to run things that open the floor up and it worked some. Uh, at probably fourth quarter, we started going in to Katie down on the block, mm -hmm. and that was probably a difference in the game. So, David got a couple drives. Uh, Danielle Gabo went to the free throw line and hit a couple free throws. We got a couple layups out of Autumn. So, you know, um, first to begin, uh, uh, Imani was getting to the basket. Uh, Tierra Rose played good defense. So, and Katie had Katie rebound the ball well. It was the same, you know, people that have been doing it for us. Um, I just think uh, we're fortunate enough uh, to uh, be co-champs with T High, and then tomorrow, Friday we'll play uh, for the seed. Uh, we're trying to figure that out. We're trying to go to Paris uh, at seven o'clock on Friday. And um, winner gets the number one seed, and that, they'll play uh, Highland Park. And um, whoever takes the uh, second seed will play um, Poteet. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, what about playing a team for the third, well, actually the fourth time? We've had three uh, previous meetings with Texas High, so you know, what's that like? I don't know. Uh, they beat us by like eight over in Winsboro Tournament. And then we uh, beat them at, at home uh, by, no, at their place, I'm sorry, by three. Mm -hmm. And then they killed us here. Um, I hope, I'm praying that it was because we had some illnesses. Mm -hmm. um, they heard us on the press and 32 turnovers. I just want to, um, I guess I got to look at it on the positive side. That's a, that's a warm up game for the playoffs because we're in. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we can do better against their press, we'll have a better chance to win. And going into the playoffs, I feel more confident that we have a good press record. You said the day after the Texas High game here that you thought your team was trying to play too fast. So I think tempo will be a key that you'll be trying to tell your team just kind of relax. I try, but T High makes you uh, speed up. Yeah, because they double. As soon as I looked at the film this morning, as soon as you get off the uh, get over the half court line, they double team Sedavia, mm -hmm. and and we got we got to uh, have help with her. 
So I got to run some different offense. Last time I left up there with one guard front and nobody flashed to the middle of the floor. And But we got to run a set that gives her an opportunity to pass to someone immediately because then that puts too much pressure on her and then she goes and makes a mistake and we're leaving out there by herself. So we got to do a better job of calling sets that enables her to have more people helping her. And we do. Uh, I just didn't do it last time. I couldn't even tell you why. But usually we do. We created offense when she was a freshman so that um, it would, we'd be able to help her because as a freshman, we didn't want to send it to the dogs out there by herself. So we created offense to help her, and, and it works better. The game slows down, and anytime they got double, it's um, we have four and then and on their three. So uh, I'm going to try, try to do a better job of play calling. So I'm... You know, I, I didn't ever get mad and blame the kids when they we didn't win, and I don't do that. I tell the truth, but I told you know I just told them um, we just didn't play well, and I missed some calls, and I'm gonna try to do a better job again of calling more uh, more of a two guard front. So when they're doubling, she's got somebody next to her, and we'll have a high post and wings, and then that'll give us a better opportunity to run some sets and get people to the middle of the floor. And wasn't nobody at the middle of the floor. So I saw that. That's my mistake. On National Signing Day Wednesday, Wildcats quarterback Ryan Humphreys signed a letter of intent to play college football at Sam Houston State University in Huntsville. Those who signed letters got double Don questioning from me and Don Wallace with the Sulphur Springs News Telegram. We talked with Humphreys about going to Sam Houston State. I uh, talked to Sam Houston kind of earlier in my junior year. Been talking to them since then, and uh, I went to a camp earlier in the summer. Did real well, and kind of just talked to him throughout the season, uh, my senior year. And then really, you know, didn't talk to him much until probably after Christmas. And then uh, a couple weeks after that, they called me and said, uh, you know, that they wanted me to come play for them. And so, you know, all this time, that's kind of what I've wanted to do. And so, you know, I was, I, was happy that, I was happy that that opportunity came along. How do you like Huntsville? Huntsville's cool. I've been down a couple times. Uh, you know, it's probably two times bigger than Silver Springs, so that's, that's cool. And it's by, you know, it's by some other big towns. But I think, I think it's, a, it's a great place. And, you know, Sam Houston's a, a real traditionally winning program, so the fan base is great. I would assume you would like to continue your career as a quarterback. Yeah, uh, you know, they're going to bring me in as a quarterback. Uh, but... You know, they understand my versatility uh, that I can play elsewhere. And so they're, they're going to kind of use me, use me as a utility player, just kind of plug in wherever. And that's to me, that's totally fine. You know, even a quarterback needs to catch a pass in the Super Bowl or something. Yeah, well, you, you definitely see that. Uh, you see that nowadays. Uh, and so that, you know, that opens up the playbook a lot. So. Seems like they've got a real good program and they've had a lot of success. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Coach Keeler, he... Uh, He's got it. He's he's got it good down there. Uh, over the last seven years, they've uh, they've won a lot more than they've lost. Uh, you know, it's it's great to go into a program where you can uh, you know win a national championship every year. Uh, so, you know, I'm excited to be a part of that. Or you think you can play right away, or are you redshirt? Uh, I you know that'll be something that that uh, we'll see in fall camp stuff like that, but. You know, whatever whatever they see me as is, is, is what's best for sure. What, how sad are they at quarterback right now? Well, they just uh, they just graduated uh, two-time Walter Payton winner uh, Jeremiah Briscoe, and so they'll have to they'll they'll have a new quarterback. But I think I think they'll be four or five uh, on the roster, so it'll, it'll be good going forward. All right. What do you want to study, Sam? Uh, I'll study uh, business marketing. Okay. Well, congratulations. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Had you, had, you, had you thought about maybe a, um, some baseball opportunities at college? Uh, your heart really in staying in football? Or? Well, uh, you're talking about at Sam Houston? Well, no, we know the other colleges. Oh, know. well, I mean, I have, you know, I had some other baseball offers, but uh, my, you know, my heart was with the football from the start, and I knew that. And when the opportunity, you know, came that I wanted, that's, I knew that was what I needed to do. They let you play baseball? Um, I've actually, uh, I've actually talked to their baseball coach, Coach Deggs, before, and uh, you know, I, I think we'll cross that bridge uh, when it gets there. But uh, for right now, you know, I'm just focus on football. You got to spring football and all that. To yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, you know, that's a lot. Uh, so we'll see. But uh, 
But you know, I'm just I'm just excited for the opportunity. Excited about the, the, the new level for us going to college. What do you think is going to be the biggest, biggest change for you? Um, for you know, I uh, you know it's it's no secret that I've played against some uh, some some great talent uh, in East Texas. But uh, you know, playing around guys that are that are all you know wanting as bad as you do, and playing against guys that are you know all studs and things like that, like that that excites me. And so, uh, like I said, great opportunity. Watching. Absolutely, what, what I appreciate y'all. What kind of offense they run down there? They're, are, they, uh, are they a spread type? They're thing? they're a spread offense. Uh, you know, they've got some dudes that can run it, but you know, that sometimes they'll throw the ball 50 times a game. Wow! So I know that's got excited. Yeah, it? yeah, that's great. That's great. <laughs> it would excite any 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 quarterback coming in. Yeah, throw, absolutely, throw that much. absolutely. But you said that the coach has been there like seven years. That, that, that coach? Yeah, uh, that the coach Keeler has been there for a while and. Uh, so he's he's definitely he's got a great program set down there. Been playing against I think I was playing with again, what SFA and some other schools. Right SFA, McNeese, Lamar, okay. Incarnate Word. Uh, I think there's I think there's eleven in the Southland Conference. Okay. That's where Sam is Southland That's Conference. Too, I, uh, I think for basketball. Uh, That's right. They don't play. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll be cool to play uh, SFA. Uh, that's a big rivalry game. They always play that at uh, the Houston Texans uh, stadium. So that'll be that'll be neat. Is this something you've been thinking about for a long time? It seemed like it, it got here quick, or it seemed like it was a long process to, well, to kind of get to the point where you're signing a scholarship? You know, you uh, you hope for this stuff as a kid, and uh, you know, one day you wake up and it's actually happening. Uh, and it's 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 a lot harder than it is uh, than, it, than I'm saying, but uh, a lot of hard work and a lot of a lot of patience, and uh, you know, trusting in my coaches and playing with great teammates, and my parents have been great. And uh, all my friends have been super supportive. Uh, They're all here today. Absolutely, there's a lot of people here. Uh, it's a fun day. Uh, but yeah, so you know, you, you think about it a long time, and then you wake up and it's actually happening. So <laughs> and then you're I'm a bearcat, huh? Abs- and now I'm a bearcat. <laughs> Went from a wildcat to a bearcat. Wildcats defensive lineman Deidrick Dugan signed a letter of intent Wednesday to play college football at Arkansas Tech. I just really liked. Uh, the atmosphere there and their school and their players. I got to meet a lot of them and hang out for a night, and I just really liked it there. What town is that in? Russellville, Arkansas. How did you like the town? It was pretty nice. It's a bunch of lakes and stuff, so and there's a bunch of stuff to do uh, while in my spare time. Big question with you is, is whether or not you'd be you know, like a defensive lineman or they would I'll be def- defensive end. They run a four-two-five. I'll be in a defensive end position. That's good for you. You like that? Yes, You're in a four-two-five. I don't know. They're running a four-two-five. Oh, okay. Oh. Are they good? Yes, sir. Yes, they went uh, eighty-three, I believe, in the past season, and they beat Harding, which went to the semifinals, I think, for the NCAA uh, national championship. So they beat them. So I think they'll be pretty good next year too. If I put it, if I work hard enough, I definitely think I can. What, what are you going to study there? Uh, most likely engineering, but if not, business management. Oh, good. Okay. What do you think is going to be your biggest change for us going to going to co- playing college instead of high school? Uh, getting used to the speed there okay. and just staying in shape with the guys and just being able to play at their speed now. Have they said anything about your? But you weight or anything? They want you to put on a few more pounds, or or, or what? Not, not what, yet. What's, what's your height and weight? What are you six thinking? foot, two hundred thirty pounds. Two thirty, okay. I mean, you feel like that's that's a, that's a good size for you for yes, to play linebacker and everything. But I do plan on putting more weight on. Play, yeah. you know, play defense in. Um, uh, not that I know. Catching uh, passes, or uh, I don't think so. Uh, is this something that's been your goal to to play at college? Yes, most college? definitely. I always go to college and get my degree as well. Anybody, have they, have they thought about maybe signing anybody else from this, from this area? Uh, we were, they were going to sign Terrell, but he signed with Southern Arkansas. Oh, okay. so. is, that pretty, is that pretty close? Is that, was, is that a rival for that? Yeah, school? it's a rival. You know, what, what conference are y'all in? The GAC. Okay. Y'all play Southern Yes, sir. Uh, I don't think we play Henderson. We might, I'm not sure, but we do play Washita as well.
Wildcats cornerback Terrell Terman signed a letter of intent Wednesday to play college football at Southern Arkansas, the Mule Drivers. Oh, really? I didn't even know about Southern Arkansas until they talked to me uh, about football. And I went down there and I really liked it. The coaches were really nice to me. And uh, I mean, just kind of made the decision there. I felt like I could be there the next four or five years. What's a town in Southern Arkansas? Uh, Magnolia. It's about the same size as Silver Springs, maybe a little bit smaller. That's pretty good. Yes, sir. Same size. Yes, there. sir. You like the coaching staff and all that? Absolutely. Uh, Coach Fig was the one that recruited me. He was really down to earth. He was straight up with me. He said, "Hey, uh, we're down that corner. You have a chance to start early. So, I mean, why not go down there and give it a shot?" Are they looking at corner or safety for you, or what are they going to do? Uh, either or. Right now they're looking at me at corner, have me bulk up a little bit, get about 180, 185, and go from there. Yes, sir. Yeah, you've been there for, I guess, all four years of the high school. So yes, sir. Ready for that corner, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. You think you can play right away? Uh, I have a shot for sure. I just got to go in and work. That's the yeah. biggest thing. It's hard work. We've well, we some other athletes. Some yes, sir. What are you going to study? Uh, I'll be studying accounting. I want to take it a step further from what my mom did and get the CPA test out the way and hopefully make about six figures 45 years afterward. Yeah. Yes, sir. You kind of like that challenge on the corner, some of that man-on-man stuff? You know, yes, uh-huh. It's the, I think it's one of the toughest positions in football, but with my mindset, I feel like I can play that position at a really good and great way. You know, uh, you got to have a great mindset for it. it it's Everybody's going to talk down on you when you're doing bad, and people are going to bring you up when you're doing good. So, you just got to strap it up. On the island, huh? Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. You got nervous about being here. Hold on. Thurman Island, huh? Yeah. Uh, what do you, what you think is going to be the biggest change, I guess, because in college, in college receivers will be bigger and faster and all They'll that stuff? They'll be bigger and faster. Just not having my family there every day, you know, pat me down and calm me down. So, that'll be a big challenge for me, but I think I can handle it. Lady Cat softball player Macy Hollins signed a letter of intent Wednesday to play her college softball at Texas Southern University in Houston. They just saw me at a tournament like two years ago, my sophomore year, and I started researching about them, and I really liked the coaches and the girls. And when we went to visit, I fell in love with the campus. So, You're a very versatile player. What role do they see for you? Outfield. Outfield, okay. Yes. You've been doing a lot of catching, but uh, you like outfield? I love outfield. <laughs> you like outfield better? Yeah. How's your hitting coming along? Um, it's going good. They don't know if I'm going to hit left-handed or right-handed, but we'll see. <laughs> Do you think you're going to start right away for them? Or? Uh, I'm not sure. They're pretty good. <laughs> pretty good team. Yes. How'd your visit go? Uh, it was really good. We went during homecoming week, so um, there are a lot of activities. What do you want to study down there? Well, they don't have nursing, so I'm getting my basics, and then I'm going to have to transfer. So I'm going for two years. Yeah. You, you want something in the medical field? Yes. You're involved in, they said you were on an ambulance. <laughs> yeah. I was yes. Glad you were. Okay. So how, how was that? It was good. That's a good program. Yes. Is this, is this something that you've been thinking about for a while, but, but getting a chance to play college college? Ball? I've always wanted to play college softball. I just didn't know where. Looking forward to a big senior year? I hope so. I think we're going to be pretty good. Playing yeah. outfield, huh? Have you, have you, have you played outfield? Uh, My whole life, yeah. pretty much. So center or right? Uh, I play left and center for my travel team. So. What do you think is going to be the biggest change for us playing in college? Um, like the practice schedules. We practice a lot practice a in lot. early morning practices. McKenna Kager, a four-year starter for the Lady Cats soccer team, signed a letter of intent Wednesday to play soccer at Washita Baptist University in Arkansas. Found out about Washita through research with my club team and they came and watched me play during one of my tournaments that I played with my club team and they got in contact with me and I just fell in love with the school. You visited and everything, what's it like? Uh, I went on two visits and it was just a great atmosphere. They all made me feel very welcome and it was just a beautiful campus. Do they have a good team there? Yes, they do. They have a really great program. What town is it in, in uh, Arkansas? It's in Arkadelphia. Arkadelphia. Yes. Do you like that town? <laughs> yeah, it's a nice town. It's 
Just right. What do they tell you about what you might do in terms of uh, your play with them? Um, so all of my play is definitely going to have to be earned, but I believe that through hard work I can definitely get the playing time that I want. Are they looking forward, midfield? Or what, what, what? Um, they're looking for me as a forward for sure. Okay, all right. And that makes you happy, I'm sure. Yes, it does. Very comfortable with that position. Yes. What uh, will you be studying uh, at uh, Washita? I will be majoring in biology. So. Lady Cat soccer coach Joel Bailey talked about McKenna Kager. Valuable, valuable player. Has been doing this since her freshman year, so just the quality of experience uh, comes from a club background to where she's played in some really intense atmospheres and uh, showcase tournaments. So uh, definitely, definitely a valuable player and a part of our team this year. <laughs> Is she vocal or is she more just do it on the field and kind of blow the players? Yes, yeah, she's she, uh, definitely vocal, uh, definitely uh, will step out and uh, help out in the team any way she can, whether uh, just adjusting shape or tactically out on the field where I can't walk out on. Maybe she can, you know, be a voice of, hey, you know, let's maybe think about this, think about that. But uh, definitely uh, leads uh, vocal and with her play. Boy, we're, we're making a habit out of talking to these ones with four years on the varsity, that's something else. Absolutely, this this current senior squad has, uh, the majority of them have been doing it since their freshman year. And uh, that, that's a blessing, but uh, that leadership and experience next year, you know, we'll, we'll be looking to replace some big shoes. What do you see as her, her strong points as she you know, goes you know, advances on to college for her? Well, obviously she's a goal scorer, okay. and that's why we have her in that center forward position to where she can hold the ball if need to to uh, get numbers up, or she can turn and she can take defenders on and she can get it in on frame and challenge goalkeepers. So that's what she plays at club, and we definitely lean on that experience uh, to where she can do the same thing in the high school rankings. Do you think her game will translate into college? So like she'll just fit in pretty well. And I, I, I think that, I that, think that uh, possibly the center forward spot, maybe outside forward and attacking mid. I'm not sure the formation that a Washita plays, but um, she'll fit in and be a valuable piece from day one. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.